Hey friends, so I'm here today to do like a, a week, a week in Camp NaNoWriMo update, how it's going, uh, just how I'm doing, what are my stats? So as of today when I'm filming this, which is April 8th, I have currently 7,012 out of 35,000 words done. Um, I'm a little disappointed because I'm, I'm definitely a little behind where I thought I would be right now. I definitely thought that uh, it'd be very easy for me to uh, get ahead. It's been a bit of a struggle, this fan fiction. I mean, overall, I'm very excited about what I'm doing so far, but there's definitely been some setbacks and some challenges that I had not perceived. First of all, I mentioned that I had this story that I'd kind of been planning for several years. Like I had this synopsis that I'd written and tooled for years and years and years. Well, that synopsis, I always kind of thought of as being my idea for a Robin movie, like a standalone movie. Also, sorry, I've got like this mad scientist haircut. Should I just embrace it? Should I just poof it out even more? God, I need a touch up. Where was I? Oh yeah, the things that, the challenges. Yeah, I pictured that story as being like a movie. And so far, trying to like write it out as a novel, like actually put words and descriptions and scenes to this uh, outline that was conceived as like a movie treatment, it really feels like I'm writing like a movie novelization. There's elements to my premise that simply uh, do not work as a sequence of events that's effective in novel format. For example, so the very opening of the book in the outline that I had, of course, I envisioned it as a film. So my idea was that like the first five minutes of the film Robin by Hagen was going to be like this extended prologue sequence that begins with Tim Drake and he's living in like a very normal uh, like suburban area. And then he and his father are going to move to a new city. They don't say what the name of it. And we see this sequence where Tim uh, and his father are in in their car. They're driving to their uh, new home. And there'd be this, this sequence of events where they're on, they're on like a normal crowded highway. And then suddenly uh, they turn off onto this exit that's very kind of empty and decrepit. And then they go through like a wooded area and then onto another highway. But that other highway is like on a weird desert plain and there's no other cars on the road, and Tim falls asleep. And when Tim wakes up, he they are all, have already arrived in Gotham. And Gotham, in contrast to like his normal suburban neighborhood that looks like any neighborhood that you could see outside your window right now, is like this Bo Welch, Tim Burton style. Like it might as well be the land of Oz for how kind of otherworldly Gotham City is in my mind. Because that's the version of Gotham that I like, the sort of weird looking Gothic city. And then there would be like an opening credit sequence where we see like a montage of locations in Tim's neighborhood, you know, broken down signs, uh, you know, exhaust vents blowing steam through the concrete pavement, rats and crows scurrying along the roof. There's old crashed cars that have just been abandoned on the sides of roads and nobody may even bother to pick them up. And it's most, there's a lot of like visual language that is necessary for this story to work. There's a lot of visual language that sets up the tone of this story that I simply cannot do in like word form. I have to like literally just describe what everything looks like. And when you have to describe it, it sounds a little silly. It's it's very strange. And also like I have this tendency so far that where I go on like four paragraph tangents on just like how bizarre and like wonderlandy this neighborhood looks and because I have such specific ideas of what everything looks like. But I think it's coming across as more silly than dramatic as it would if I were making a movie. So that's a problem. By the way, I did, see, I bought a little Tim Drake. I love that because this is from the new Batman Adventures. This is definitively Tim Drake. It's not just another Robin wearing his suit, which happens a lot. Tim Drake was the first Robin to like wear pants. But retroactively, most artists go back and give the other Robins Tim's outfit. Like if you see like Dick Grayson in Teen Titans, like he's wearing Tim Drake's outfit. And it kind of sucks that like this outfit, that's it's Tim's Robin outfit is just like, well, now everybody has it. Another problem is I'm constantly worried about what my friend who I'm sort of writing this for is going to think of it. When I first started writing, I, okay, hold on. 
story time. So last November, I participated in regular NaNoWriMo and I failed. I only wrote like, I only wrote like 15,000 words of a novel. So big fail. But the way that that manuscript ended up coming out is I wrote several sequences of events, several scenes, and then in between where there was like a gap in the story that I hadn't written, I'd put parentheses and I'd make like an eloquent description of events, a description of all the stuff that had happened. I actually sent this to the same friend, Alex, uh, just to see like what his general thoughts are on it. He didn't like it. I kind of assumed that's what I was probably gonna have to do with this, because this is like, you know, a novel length project and I probably wouldn't get it done. So my premise was I was going to write like the first five chapters and then like the middle five chapters and then like the last five chapters. And in between those, I'd put like a very eloquent, dramatic description of what happens. It's come to my attention that that's not nearly enough to encompass most and not even some of the story. Like realistically, this would probably be like a 30 chapter novel, but I like the first five chapters just ain't gonna do it. Like the majority of the story would end up being in those synopsis brackets. And I'm not gonna send this to my friend if all I'm showing him is like a synopsis of events. And I don't think that's possible. I've kind of have to change my game plan. So my current game plan is I'm just trying to really streamline this story. So right now it's kind of reading like a junior novelization of a movie, you know, where it might end up being like 150 pages. And I, I've already got like a lot of subplots that I've just cut out. There's a whole subplot where Stephanie Brown, <laughs> like there's a whole subplot where uh, Tim meets Stephanie's other friends. Like there's a whole mess of like five other characters and like he, Tim meets them and learns about them and then they die tragically and there's fallout for that in his in his and Stephanie's lives. I've just cut it out, like it's, I'm not using it, like it's just gone. Um, there are subplots that I'm just genuinely just gonna kick out, like I'm not using them anymore. Like I'll probably end up reinserting them over the next few years if I go back and like tool with this, but I don't know. I'm worried that maybe I don't need to show this to my friend when I'm done. Maybe I should just mainly focus on writing it for me. Ooh, do you want to hear some of the stuff I wrote? Gotham City sits isolated and in reconstruction. For many years, the United States government has declared the city no man's land. Access is restrained. Coast Guard bases maintain the borders from a safe distance. The skies are no fly. Private airwaves are barred, preventing news broadcasts from coming in or out. The dark city stacks itself against the coastline confused, lawless, and friendless. So that's my update. I don't know what I'm doing and I'm behind schedule. Having a blast. Mm. But I have finished reading uh, Batman A Lonely Place of Dying just yesterday, actually. It's very cool. I, I have a lot of, I have a couple of like Easter eggs that I plant. I have a lot of Easter eggs actually that I'm planting in this. Ooh, that's another thing. I've come to realize that like Tim Drake, who's my Robin, his main characterization, and it's this is even here, his main characterization is that he has incredible intelligence and he's not that good of a fighter. Heck, I used to fantasize what it would be like to be Robin. I study hard. I get mostly A's. I work out. I'm no circus acrobat, but I'm pretty good, I guess. Even all of his like big action moments in here are mo mostly just him outsmarting criminals. He doesn't really beat anybody up. Like he's able to like see a threat coming before it gets to him and he's able to get out of the way in time. Like there's not a lot of him punching people. The majority of this is that he's just like such a Batman fanboy and is able to almost effortlessly investigate the Bat family, take really up close and personal pictures of Batman, the Teen Titans, Nightwing. Uh, he's able to somewhat piece together this like fraud conspiracy at a circus after just like staying there for two hours. Like his main attribute is that he's just smart. I know somewhere there's a, there's a qu quote from Rachel Ghoul where he describes Tim Drake as being an even better detective than Batman. And like Batman is, the world's greatest detective. So what does that, what does that tell you? But it, it has come to my attention that it's really hard to just write a character who's smart. I don't know, we'll have to see. Um. I got it on eBay for $6. These usually go for like 20 bucks 
and that's like with shipping it's like 25 dollars because they, they don't make them anymore there's these are from like the 90s this is the tim drake as he appeared in the new batman adventures but i love him this is my favorite version of the robin costume no green black and red green is dead also you can see i did do the uh the color coding 